Okay, thank you. Um, good afternoon, Senator Dow, Representative Tipping. Uh, my name is John Fitzgerald. I'm the Vice President and General Counsel for Bath Ironworks. Uh, in that role, I have responsibility also for our contracts. Um, as many of you know, we've constructed ships on the banks of the Kennebec River for 100 years. Uh, we design and construct the most advanced ships um, the world has seen, and we provide economic security for 5,600 plus Mainers and their families. And, and as you've heard, and is in my uh, prepared testimony, uh, we have a lot of people that, that depend on us. And there's uh, 300 main businesses every day that depend on us, and those 5,600 main people. But the couple, the, the things I really want to impress upon you, I think, that would help um, in, in your consideration of this legislation is one, uh, the past bill was a, a great benefit to Bath Ironworks and the state of Maine. And I believe we delivered on the value that was, was hoped for in that bill. Uh, over that time, we invested a half a, mil, half a billion dollars. We gained work that we wouldn't otherwise <laughs> had, and frankly, if we had not built that facility, we would not have gotten the Zumwalt destroyers, which came at a time when the Navy had uh, really declined building other ships and the ceased building DD-51s altogether. So we, we've also, and, and I've got an exhibit in my package, we've also experienced a past where we weren't always owned by uh, someone that was looking to invest capital. There's two pictures. So you'll see in the back of my testimony, there's one that shows what the shipyard looks like in 1985 before General Dynamics purchased us and one after. And what that shows is we went through a period from 1967 through uh, 1996 when we were purchased where we were owned through a series of mergers and acquisitions and leveraged buyouts. And those were not owners that would invest in the business. Here we have an owner that is willing to step up here today and has a plan to invest $100 million over the next year and hire 500 people. You're going to hear, I'm sure, a lot of opposition here today, but none of them are going to come forward with an actual plan to do what I just said, and that is continue to hire 5,600 people. We have to compete for this work. We've got a competition that will be announced later this week from the U.S. Navy, and the fact is these are fixed price contracts for which we bid years into the future, and we're taking risk. There is no guaranteed profit. The price of these ships is pretty, pretty close margins. We buy the same material, the same type of ship. It comes down to the cost of your labor, labor efficiency, and your overhead. Thank are, you. If you could summarize your testimony. Absolutely. <coughs> uh, and that, that probably really does it because this, this bill is important uh, enough that we're here and, you know, we've got someone willing to invest and that's important and it keeps these people working. If we win work, that's how we keep people employed. We're trying to win work. Thank you. Any questions from the committee? Senator Shinnett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald. Um, paint me um, a financial picture, if you will, of both BIW um, and General Dynamics. And in particular, I'm curious, what is the, on average, uh, both the CEO pay of both companies as well as net profits in a given year? So I definitely am not here and will not speak for General Dynamics. I mean, that, that's a public company. I'm not well versed in general dynamics. They're, they're our owner. We're a separately held, publicly uh, or privately owned main corporation. So it's inappropriate for me to speak, you know, on that. And as a public company, some of those questions um, are out there in the public domain. And so, and I don't have that information. You know, what the president of Bath Ironworks makes, I would say, is uh, the the policy of our company is to pay our people at 50% of the market average. So you have data in, your, um, in my testimony which indicates that for overall jobs in, at BIW, we are, I think, $14,000 above the state average. And for production workers, 
um, I believe it's it's ten thousand above that. And so, as far as you know, I don't know what our president makes, but I I do know what the policy for uh, employment wages are in, in our company. Just to follow up, Mr. Chair, um, and, and again, you know, you're you're requesting sixty million dollars in taxpayer money, so I'm just trying to get a sense of Absolutely. what the current financial picture is. Do you think it's relevant to uh, interject what the profits of the parent company are when we talk about whether or not to give you that sizable amount of money? Sure. Um, and what I, I'd respond by telling you. We are a company that lives or, or doesn't live on our own merits. And we have to win work. And then we have to win work on terms where we can make a profit. And if we can make a profit, then we can reinvest in this massively capital intensive business. We're not at a place right now where that's occurring yet. We have an owner that takes a long view and says, well, maybe today you just lost a competition uh, the last competition against uh, Ingalls, you lost a competition for Coast Guard ships. We believe in you. We're going to continue to invest in you. But, you know, the, the, the profits of, of our parent um, are not because of the operations of Bath Ironworks. I mean, so, you know, it's, it's good to to have an owner with the kind of support uh, that we, we've enjoyed and the state's enjoyed because, again, 1980s, three leverage buyouts. And if you look at that picture, picture A, that's what you get when you have that kind of ownership. So on the one hand, I understand your question. Uh, on the other hand, that's, not how it, that's just not how it works. I mean, we have to, we have to uh, win work on our own. And when we win work, we employ more people. I mean, there's a direct correlation between those two things. I mean, um, I'm sure you'll hear today that, that there's some correlation with a drop in employment and, and general dynamics actions. Well, that's not true. There's two peaks in employment at, at Bath Ironworks. One was in 1940, and we all know what caused that. The other was in the late 80s when the Navy uh, was seeking to build up to 600 ships. It's currently at 300. So the number of ships being purchased is fewer and fewer, and we're competing, frankly, with more people and, and more companies and more states that want those jobs. So um, I think the perspective that I can lend on that is we've seen both sides of a, of a corporation that, that has the ability and the, the foresight uh, to invest over long periods, and that's what uh, General Dynamics is willing to do with this additional $100, uh, $100 million investment. Okay. Thank you. Representative Grant. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for being here, Mr. <coughs> Fitzgerald. Um, Absolutely. This, um, this credit that's been ongoing for the last 20 years has been $3 million uh, a year, approximately. Correct. Um, and it's presumed that, that if this is approved, it will be that same amount going forward. Yes. And um, I realize two things. One, that it's, it's smaller than some of the other states you've cited in your testimony. Um, we're not asking for parity. And I see that. that. That's clear, so I wanted to have you make that point. The other question I have is um, you've heard us debate um, some of the other credits, and we're asking for more accountability. We're asking for more reporting even of data that might be have considered um, sort of private in the past. Um, is the company um, prepared to go forward uh, under that kind of a new scenario where we have um, you know, clear goals and, and, and showing how uh, we're going to meet those goals. And, and, and if so, and I, and I think that's probably the case, um, what, is your, what is your, over the next few years, what is your pro projected number of employees increase, or are we talking about maintaining? Uh, what are we going to ask for? What are we going to get right. in exchange for, um, for this investment? I guess that's yep, the bottom line. Of, all right, so the, the question as to reporting and accountability. I mean, you know, I believe that this uh, bill and the, well, the prior legislation had that. We don't have a problem with that. I mean, the, the ultimate um, accountability here, I think, and the measures are, did you attract capital investment? Where did your employment go? And did you win any work? Uh, so 
you know, and in so doing, I think you can discover whether the state got a fair deal. But, you know, we're certainly willing to discuss whatever reporting uh, we think is and you think is, is appropriate under the circumstances. What was the second part of the question? I'm oh, sorry. The, oh, I do, the, where, I do. Where's the employment going? So, well, we, on Thursday of this week, we will get a draft uh, request for proposals from the Navy, which um, we're not certain how many ships it's going to be. It may be 10. It may be 15. Uh, but those are going to be competed. And w from prior discussions, we've understood that it, it may not be uh, an equal award and that the low cost bidder is not surprisingly going to win more work. And I think that's, um, so we're hoping to win at least five ships, but we need to win more. We want to win more. Five ships would keep us, would sustain us, uh, probably about at the levels we're at now, but we're also looking at, at the next generation frigate um, because the time frames for, for this business are so far out there. But, you know, we're competing for frigates, which, which was once the hallmark of what was built in Bath with, with an open field. So, you know, our immediate uh, need for this credit and the investment is the competition that we're going to uh, enter here within the probably uh, 90 days that, that will be due, something along those lines. Representative Tapler. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald, for being here. Um, I would like to echo some of Representative Grant's concerns. Um, I think that, uh, you know, we need to take a look at all tax investments the state is making with uh, the same kind of eye in terms of, you know, setting goals and making sure that we're meeting goals um, of public, of what the public interest in providing um, incentives is. Um, I do have a question that follows up a little bit on Senator Chinette's question, and, and I feel like I have to do my due diligence um, with this. Um, there are several articles I've read in different newspapers, including the Providence Journal, about the parent company's stock buyback program. And, um, and I think you just gave a little bit of an explanation about the, the difference between their corporate structure and yours. But I, I, need, I need to be able to explain to people why those monies um, aren't, aren't available and, and public dollars um, need to be used instead to help support the organization. Okay, respectfully, that's not a decision that I'm in, involved with, informed about, or have any capacity or authority to speak to. Um, we need to demonstrate we're worthy of investment in Bath. And so the corporation seeks return on that investment and makes decisions accordingly. Thank you, Mr. Fitzgerald. Is anyone from um, your parent corporation going to be present either now or at the work session? No. Okay, thank you. Representative Tipping? No, oh, Representative Stanley. Thank you, Senator. Having <clears throat> been here in 97 and voted for this, I'm glad I did. Thank you. And the reason why I say that is because back in, with the dry dock was a very important part of the dry dock in order to expand your business. Still and that is. has worked out very well. And, 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 and basically, I used to work for an outfit that had 5,000 people too. And I look at the list of where you get all your employees from. And I had a list almost like that, they were a little bit smaller. But it went from Holton all the way down to Bangor and all the areas around Milwaukee. And I'll tell you, $50,000, I made $50,000 at least, and most of these people here make about $50,000. And I'll tell you what, what the income brings into these local communities is quite a bit. And, that, and that's why, you know, back then, the skepticism in 97 on whether to do this or not. But I've seen it as a positive thing. I, I see Southern Maine doing good, and Monarch is not doing good. But, but the point of the matter is, though, my question basically is, uh, 
you, you put $200 million in, and you, and you ended up over $500, half a billion dollars you invested. Now, with a $100 million investment, what is a $100 million, $100 million investment going to do to improve your production and create, keep the jobs that you have? Yep. Um, well, first of all, I, I get right back to that facility. I mean, the same ice that is uh, crushing the, the shorelines right south of here uh, rolls through our facility. The same water main breaks that communities had in uh, the, the cold weather, we have that facility, that dry dock is 20 years old now. And again, it sits on a grid, it goes out into the river, it submerges and comes back up and, and um, the maintenance required on, on that and the facility. I mean, we, we put more salt in uh, the shipyard to melt ice than the entire city of Bath. And most of that is put on by our friends at H.C. Uh, Crooker from Topsom. So, um, you know, the, the facility and the upkeep of the facility is really the, the dire issue that we're trying to, to communicate about. And that is you have to be in a business and win work that is profitable enough and you're good enough to keep investing at these levels. And right now, that is a serious challenge for this business. And again, we're up against someone that is just much, much bigger. They have other programs. They can spread their costs. So beyond that, the investment is in, and, and again, I don't want to broadcast to our single competitor that we're going to, to competition with what exactly we're investing in, but there are other tooling and machinery uh, that, is, that is being purchased. Um, and paint and blast capacity. I mean, that's not a, a surprise for a shipbuilder. Uh, Senator Cushing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Mr. Fitzgerald, thank you for coming here to present your uh, company's case. In, in terms of the ships that Bath produces, uh, what percentage of those are dependent upon federal dollars or, or some form of, uh, of government contract? We, we are 100 percent government contracting, whether it's, you know, hopefully it, we, we had hoped to build for the Coast Guard, but for the Navy, Department of the Navy. But I may follow up, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Thank you. So in regards to this, what we're really talking about when we talk about a tax benefit is taxpayer dollars reducing the potential bid cost for taxpayer dollars for a, a defense project. That's correct. Okay. I mean, you, you know, the Navy is a, is a customer that wants high quality ships and they want them fast and uh, they want them at as low a price as, as they can get them. And they can drive the two, basically the two entrants in the market. I mean, it's a, admittedly a unique and, and uh, circumstance. Thank you. And just in conclusion, in, in the event that you had to retool for the private market, what would the potential cost be to, to produce ships that would make this profitable? Or is there even a market for something of that size with your facility? Well, I, I'm probably not qualified to, to answer that. Um, you know, there's the market for commercial ships is very different. It, it would certainly take <coughs> facilities differences. And, 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 you know, we have a, a sister shipyard in San Diego that builds commercial uh, ships. So it would, it would take a significant rearranging of our physical business. In part, one of the, one of the impediments is you have to move a lot of steel, and we are, we are hemmed in in a small, compact city and you need to be able to process large um, plates of steel direct from where you receive it to where you start working on it. And that's really as far as the lawyer's going to get into the construction of ships. Okay. Representative Hilliard. Thank you, Senator Dow. Uh, Mr. Cheryl, thank you for being here today. Um, seems to me I looked at some numbers that indicated your workforce is aging significantly. I would think that your institutional knowledge is in those older workers. Could you speak a little bit to the cost 
to replace those workers and what, what your ability is going to be to do that in the near future? Yes. Um, I myself am leading that aging parade, apparently, but uh, the, the workforce is really at an interesting point because uh, we have a lot of people that joined us in the late 80s and uh, are retiring. So we've got about 300 to 350 people a year during this five or six year period that are retiring. And so uh, since 2014, we've hired 2,000 people to replace them. In general, a new employee is probably two-thirds less efficient than a fully uh, experienced employee. And the, the transfer of the knowledge and, and the knowledge that was in the, the back pocket of our mechanics um, and capturing that before it goes out the door and putting it in the, the heads of their supervisors and the people that are going to manage these new employees is a, is a tremendous task and very, very difficult. Um, and we do it um, with some assistance um, from uh, the community college system has, has attempted uh, to work with us more closely about getting a core set of skills that over a, uh, six weeks could qualify someone to go work in, in virtually any manufacturing facility. We've spent over a million dollars establishing a new training facility uh, in our own shipyard. And again, you know, three years ago, $20 million was, was used in Mississippi to build a training facility on site at Ingalls. So, you know, we, we work hard at, and, and it is an absolute challenge. And, and any of my friends here from the union uh, would attest to that. And, um, finding a way to, to accomplish that with a workforce that's, you know, 40% is, is got 25 years or more and 40% is five years or less and, and a few of us in the middle. So um, bridging that gap is, is a significant issue for, for anyone uh, facing that kind of situation. Representative Tiffany. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you for uh, coming, and uh, I want to thank everyone's patience in the audience. I know it's not easy to have a three-minute clock and then a half-hour of questions, so uh, I appreciate people bearing with us. Um, it, we heard testimony that this was based on the headquarters credit um, that uh, I, we heard last session, and when they brought that, they said it was based on the shipbuilding credit. Um, there's I would say that, uh, um, to be precise, it was... The, the form of the credit. Okay. It, the, the rest of the bill is is 100% in my view, or at least the, the bill request as, as we explained the request was a continuation of the existing tax credit bill. So that's where I have a question. It's actually a pretty radical departure in the amount and how the money is given. It seems like the, uh, I, I went and got the legislative file yep. from the 90s. It, it was fascinating. From the employee withholdings to the corporate uh, right. side. Yep. Uh, so it looks like they had set it up so that um, it, it was from the employee withholdings. Correct. It, it wasn't a refundable credit. Right. Uh, there was a safety mechanism built into it so that if ever the amount of jobs is dropped. Uh, right. The withholdings drop below that amount. Is that uh, No money would go to the That's in this employee. bill, too. Um, but it looks like, to me, my read of it is the structure changes now, and it's a corporate income tax credit where it's refundable. That's correct. Um, and I see the same language around uh, whether or not you get it based on um, uh, the certain amount of jobs and, and the investment. Uh, but why but, but that thirdly, structural change? That was, I think, well, I took the guidance from the last legislature that passed okay. the bill in that form. It's, it's not, it's not, I, I wouldn't say it's one that we requested one way or the other. Okay. We, we frankly thought that was more the will, the current will of, of decision policy makers. Uh, and just one more question. Is it necessary that it is refundable as a credit? No. Okay. Thank you. Representative Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Chair. When you say uh, you were lo looking to the previous iteration that this committee took up, are you referring to the IDEX bill? 
uh, the the previous um, well, or the previous let me start again. The, the legislation, I believe, and I believe the revisor's office drafted this way as a uh, continuation or a, or a carbon copy, if you will, of the prior shipbuilding facility tax Ship credit. Okay. So it differs in the, that one way we were just discussing in the nature of the credit. But you don't know why? I, I, well, I believe the reason is because that's the way the last credit was uh, structured by this <coughs> committee and the legislature. So only looking to follow legislative precedent in that respect. For, for the shipbuilding credit? Correct. Okay. Um, I actually have another question, if that's okay. Uh, thank you. Um, and um, we, I, I apologize in advance for my naivete about uh, find the financial structures that are involved here. Um, I frankly uh, don't truly understand the nature of the obligations between a parent corporation and, and a subsidiary. Um, uh, I know that's full of complications, but let me just focus on uh, the situation where um, the, the subsidiary uh, makes a profit. Um, is there a requirement that those uh, those uh, extra uh, additional revenues be poured back into the subsidiary, or can can it be um, uh, uh, diverted to the parent corporation? Well, if we have to make money in order for money to go anywhere whether it's back into our facility or to the stockholders of General Dynamics. So if we make a profit, you send, and then you question, is that before taxes or after taxes? But, you know, we have to be in a position where we make enough to sustain our business model, and that is to win work and, secondly, to make the kind of investments that we make. So we're not in a position right now where um, we are returning to the corporation to justify the kind of investment that's being made. We're not making enough to deal but, with but the capital push. requirements. So you know that's that's all I can. That's what I know about how our business works. I don't. You know. Well, my. The question was hypothetical. I mean, if, uh, I mean, I can tell you that, that General Dynamics is profitable because of um, it owns a lot of other businesses. I mean, we are the smallest piece of General Dynamics. Okay, but my, my question was, let's suppose Bath starts making money with the help of this bill and other good fortune. Yeah, we will invest in our business in our community and our people. Well, will get General Dynamics get a piece of that? The stockholders of General Dynamics would, absolutely. Okay, they share you. in the profits. Thank you. Any further questions from the committee? Senator Shinnick. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I appreciate you answering all of our questions, Mr. Fitzgerald, really appreciate it. I, I guess, um, you know, for the work session, I think it would be really helpful to drill down on some of the specifics regarding the financial picture of the company. You're asking for $60 million. It's hard for me to go in something blind, and I feel like I still don't have that information. In particular, I'm wondering, with a parent company making billions of profits, why can't they just front $60 million to make one of their businesses competitive? Because they're actually fronting a hundred million dollars. The sixty million dollars pays out over twenty years. So the the current um, value of that sixty million is actually forty. And again, it only comes if we invest a hundred million, and we continue to meet the other um, requirements to get the credit in the future. And the answer is. You don't, you know, capitalism, you don't deploy your capital generally where you get the, the worst return. You deploy it where you get the best return. And, you know, we've lived under a, a scenario where we did not have an owner that was willing to invest. And, you know, I, I don't know 
<clears throat> how to express that uh, there's no diversion of taxpayer funds somewhere other than Bath, Maine and the, the, and the corporation. We're, we're trying to win work. I mean, I think that, that something is lost here because it doesn't matter. When, when we compete in the next coming months for this work, there's no box that says who you own by and, and do they make money. It's what's your price? Do you have the lowest price? If you have the lowest price, you will win more work. If you win more work, you can employ more people and hopefully make a return that is sufficient to keep the enterprise going. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, that's really the reality that we live in in Bath, Maine. And so to be asked questions about a corporation that, that I'm not an employee of, I'm an employee of Bath Ironworks Corporation. And, you know, there's a, there's a public record of, of where the revenues generally come from that General Dynamics generates. So, you know, that, that's absolutely available. Okay, thank you. Any further questions from the committee? Representative Bickford. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Fitzgerald, is there any guarantee that BIW is gonna continue having work 10 years from now? I mean, all these questions about profitability and everything else, that's all based on a scenario that you're gonna always be getting work. There's no guarantee that you're gonna be getting work, is that correct? That is correct. I mean, again, we, we've, we lost the last competition. There was a ship that was involved in a collision in the Gulf that had to go back to one of two shipyards for repair. Guess where it went? You know, we lost the Coast Guard co competition to a shipyard in Florida that dared to dream that we don't think is, has anywhere near the capability or capacity that we do, but guess what? They chose the lowest price. So, you know, that's where we're trying to get to. And if we don't win work, you know, it, it's, no one is going to, I mean, it's unlike my children. This relationship isn't gonna be, a, we're just gonna have to keep, you know, supporting. It's, you know, you gotta support yourself. Thank you. Any further questions from the committee? Seeing none, I thank you for your testimony.